Welcome back guys to Bag Only, the Ultimate Iron Man with just 28 inventory slots, all that stuff, whatever. Um, just a quick one, as I was setting up, I got a maze random, um, and I thought I couldn't really skip it. So we got two natures, we got 25 deaths, and 38 steel arrows, which are worth a couple of coins, so... Uh, that's all useful stuff, just got it from a random event here while setting up the recorder, so that's great. Um, goals for today... Ideally, we want to focus on doing the Knight's Sword. Now, as I said at the end of the last episode, we need to get cooking um, in order to do the Knight's Sword. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to start off and immediately head straight back home to Lumbridge, probably shoot up to the chickens immediately, um, grab ourselves one or two pots of flour, probably two. We're going to try making two pastry dough to make our uh, uh, red berry pies in a bit. But we will need 10 cooking to do that. So if we grab this part, I think we can get away with a bowl of water. So if we just real quick hop worlds, just do another random one. Fill these bowls in the sink right here. Awesome. And then we'll just run to the chickens. Uh, we will probably just use this axe we have equipped. Um, maybe just chuck it on strength, try to get a couple of strength levels while we do this. Primarily we're here not for melee but for cooking. So we'll start off just here, we'll grab two wheat um, and we'll do the flour first and then later on we'll grab ourselves some pie dishes and make two red berry pies just in case we burn the first one. Uh, I'll probably keep the feathers. Of course our inventory is already filling up. Um, we've killed three chickens. Oh there's ten prayer, thank you to the uh, prayer that we got from the Restless Ghost quest. We need some space initially um, just to make pastry dough, which is the second option. And that means we can drop the pots and the bowls, which is good, uh, and then take our chicken back. We don't actually have to pick the logs up, we can light them where they are, which is useful. And then we'll use the raw chicken that's now been on the floor, <laughs> directly on the fire. He just dropped the chicken on the floor. I put it back in the pan. Obviously burning the first two, burning three, and burning all four. Fantastic. Wow. <laughs> um, okay, what we'll do, I'll run over to the general store and we'll make some space. Uh, and what I will actually do is just cast 15 casts of wind strike, which will get rid of all our mind runes and leave us with 10 airs, and I'll just drop the 10 airs on the floor. And there we go, that's our last mind rune use. So we'll drop the others, keep the feathers, because we'll want those. Put the leather armor back on now. So back to training a little bit of strength. It's nice to see some fellow goblins hanging around here. <laughs> they seem to have taken to me, so... Nah, this is all bullshit, got this. <laughs> okay, that's our first quote-unquote full inventory of raw chicken. We've got a space left for a log, obviously. It just sprung to my mind that Chef's Assistant exists. Actually, we could just do this quest while we're here. Uh, we'll run back to the general store, grab ourselves a pot to come here and make some flour. And so, Bag only purchased a pot in the bucket from the store. Certainly not opposed to doing an easy quest while we're in the neighborhood. We'll just milk this, and then run upstairs. Grab our flour, that's it. What we will do now we've got all the ingredients is just get an inventory of chickens. And once you've completed this quest, you are able to use the range. So if we just take some chickens with us, then um, we've got a better chance of cooking them over there than here. Right, there we go. Um, nice inventory of raw chicken. There we go. <laughs> Six cooking straight off the bat, and we can use the cooking range just in here. So much better cooking these here than over at the bonfire. Wow, that's great. We got all the way to nine. Uh, just sold all the chicken to the general store. I don't really know if it actually gave us any coins or not, because most of our money's from selling that stuff from earlier. Um, but we're just seven chickens off. Uh, and then once we've done that, I think we'll attempt to go into the ham storerooms. Um, just here to the west and do a little bit of pickpocketing while we're in town. Cool, there's six strength coming in. Um, we'll make that our last chicken. Hopefully out of these uh, we'll manage to cook seven. There's the cooking level 10 that we came for. You can cook red berry pies, that's fantastic. Uh, I've got the trapdoor highlighted here because I use it so much on a bunch of different accounts. And um, we'll just go inside. Uh, they have the exact same drop table so we'll just do the lower level people. Um, they can drop Really good low-level stuff, so iron and steel items, uh, steel arrows, iron pick, already an upgrade to the bronze. Uh, what we are here for, though, specifically is the steel pickaxe, which these guys can drop. 
It's a 1 in 50 drop rate, which is reasonably common for how quickly we can pickpocket them. And a rusty sword at 1 in 25, which we're going to need to do the RD easy diary. Uh, but if we do get like the robe bottom, or maybe the cloak, then we'll keep those, because we can equip them now. We've got the rusty sword already, so that's great. Uh, we'll maybe try to get ourselves a steel dagger as well. If we get the steel pick first, we won't worry about the steel dagger, because we're not here for that. But yeah, it's a decent place to train. We got ourselves an opal that time, which I believe you can cut at one crafting, so we'll hang on to that one. Uh, I've not dropped the jades yet, just because I figure they'll be worth some money to the general store, even if we can't cut them into uh, nice cut gems. There we go, on our 51st pickpocket, so only slightly below drop rate. Uh, we got ourselves the steel pick that we came for. Uh, we got ourselves two rusty swords, um, which we can use for the Ardy Diary. Uh, we've got this iron dagger that I guess we'll just keep with us. So in the end we ended up with three uncut opals. Um, so when we go to the general store right now we'll grab a chisel and just test if they are in fact one crafting. It's an opal! I chiseled it! Great, four crafting. Two of those opals succeeded. One got crushed, but that's okay. You do need 13 for the jades, so we'll just sell them back as they are. We'll just sell everything else, including this ham necklace. We don't need that right now. I grabbed ourselves a hammer because I know in the upcoming quest we will need to smith some blue right into some items. So as before, we'll take our trusty little canoe. We still have an axe. It's equipped to save a slot. We'll head up to Champion's Guild. We'll pick two red berries, make two pie shells, put the red berries in both pie shells, and then we'll make them hopefully in the Varrock kitchen, and then we'll begin the Knight Sword over in, I think, Falador. No one knows. <laughs> Someone's doing a Master Farmer here. Oddly he logged out as we walk past, so it's most likely a bot that automatically logs when people show up. So that's kind of sad, but oh well. <laughs> Just picked up one cadaver berry um, on the way to the red berry bush because you need one for the Romeo and Juliet quest. So I might do that while we're here, just because it takes place in Varrock. Right, here we are in Varrock Castle. We'll just head to the back kitchen. There we go. Pie dish, lovely. So we'll grab two. Um, because even if we succeed in making the very first pie, there's no reason not to make a second since we're here and we have all the ingredients. However, if we do fail both pies, I'll be really, really annoyed, so hopefully that won't happen. Please work. Oh no, please. Oh, thank god for that. Okay. So we've got our red berry pie. I really don't want to eat that by accident, so I'll just put it at the top of the inventory. Just in case I'm just being completely brainless and I click it by accident. Like I said a minute ago, we will do Romeo and Juliet real quick, um, just while we're in town. There's no real reason to, but there's also no real reason not to. Um, I do have the Cadaver Berry. All it gives you is five quest points and nothing else, no coins or anything. But, uh, you know, five quest points is five quest points, plus it's out of the way. So I'll just really quickly do this. I think, as far as I know, it's just a case of walking around Varrock a lot. So I'll probably skip a lot of it, but we'll just do this quest real quick now. There we go. Romeo and Juliet complete. That's awesome. So we'll just run to Falador now. Uh, begin this quest. While this early step of the character is quite a lot of simply walking around and doing fetch quests and things, we are making some nice progress to our skills without really training them too much, uh, and that's really the immediate early game goal. Here we are in Falador. It's another one of those towns that just screams old nostalgic free-to-play memories. I'm gonna help this squire to create a new sword. Just wondering now if we should, in fact, gather a bit more food for this. Although I think as long as you run behind a rock quick enough, you can actually avoid most of the combat in the cave, so I think all we'll do is we'll just save our run energy for that point in the quest. Uh, I've teleported back to Lumbridge because we need to go back to Varrock and talk to someone in the castle, um, so I think it's quicker to just tell you here and use the canoe rather than waste our run and run back. I know there's nothing really UIM based that's going on at the moment, but we're just trying to get a nice start to the account by doing all the other game stuff. Um, so we're currently, we've just began Night Sword. Um, we're going to go talk to Reldo in the palace, um, who's going to tell us about the Imkando Dwarf down near Port Sarim, the guy that we have to take this pie to. Um, so we'll do that part of the quest, and then while we're here, we'll go um, southeast a little bit, um, we'll kill a bear 
that was near the uh, the copper mine at the start of the game for Doric's quest, uh, just to grab a bear meat because we'll make a start on doing druidic ritual today. Probably finish it um, just so we can unlock the lore skill. So while we're knocking about um, here, we'll grab the bear, then we'll carry on with night sword, and on the way while doing night sword, we'll have a nice look. Uh, for all the other three animal meats that we're going to need for druidic ritual. So if we can get that done today, hopefully, unlock herb lore, and then we go take this pie in exchange for the knight's sword. Now, the reason I'm going for this bear south of Varrock, rather than one sort of between Varrock and Berthorpe, um, is because I'm hoping, I'm not sure, because this is a new account, but I'm hoping that the minigame teleport to Berthorpe Games Room will just work um, with no requirements and having not been there before. Uh, if that's the case, obviously it'll use the cooldown for our home telly, but I don't imagine we'll need to go back to Lumbridge in the next half hour. Obviously cups of tea aren't the best food, but every time we steal some we get a nice little chunk of thieving XP. We're at 22 now, which is nice. Thieving's going to be one of the best skills, I think, for this account, because later down the line it'll allow us to make some really good money um, with no real item requirements. Oh cool, there's a rat here as well, that's the other animal for the meat, so... Obviously, just quick stats check, we are 8 attack, 6 strength from the chickens earlier on. Grab the bones and the rat meat, you know, always bury your bones. The prayer XP is tiny, but it does add up. Right, where's this bear? There he is, hiding behind a tree. It won't let us attack it by default, because it's 19 combat. So I'm hoping we get lucky, and we can actually kill it. I didn't realise he'd be 19, I didn't actually look this up. I thought it'd be quite low level if it's near Varrock, but... At least the tea heals three. I thought it was two, so that's okay. <laughs> it's helping us somewhat, but I don't think it's enough food. We've only done nine damage to him, and we've used half half our teas already. Well, we've used all our teas. I guess we do have two cakes, but we're certainly not dipping into our red berry pie for this. I don't think this is going to happen. That's fine. Okay, I'll keep the rat meat, um, just because we do need it for the quest, but... I'll drop all these cups of tea and then we'll run back. I think another option is potentially, if I remember right, unlocking Canifis by doing Priest in Peril. Because uh, there's a meat store in Canifis and it sells kind of weird meats. It might have bear, I don't know. But I think killing the <laughs> boss monster in Priest in Peril will be harder than killing a bear, so I don't think that's really a shortcut for this quest. Uh, speaking of combat, today we are actually going to knock out Biohazard. Uh, we did Plague City last time and I kept calling it Biohazard. But we are actually going to try and do Biohazard in this episode. Very similar to the Plague City quest, although you also have to kill a level 13 mourner. And we're still combat 8, so maybe I should get a couple of levels or buy a proper weapon, maybe, before taking that on. Um, but that is a quest we want to do because it's a, a direct prereq for the Ardy Diary 1, which is going to give us our best cape. So we'll try and do Ardy Diary 1 today, Biohazard today. Night Sword today, Druidic Ritual today. At a very bare minimum. Uh, we've just come over to this clothing shop because while we're here, we can buy this priest gown. They look kind of cool. They have a little prayer bonus, which we're not really going to use at the moment on 10 prayer. Uh, but we do need both for Biohazard Quest. So I feel like equipping this for now, ditching the leather body, will mean that when we come to doing Biohazard, we'll already be prepared. So that's kind of cool. Right, we'll just check if the Berthorpe Games Room telly does in fact work. Seems like it does, so that's awesome. There's no requirements, you don't have to do a quest or visit Berthorpe first. That's really helpful for the account. And here we are, in a strange little dungeon. <laughs> now, at a slightly later date, we will come back here and do Death Plateau quest. I want to do that kind of early because it requires 20 invent spaces, which we don't even really have at the moment. But once we've done Night Sword, we won't have this red berry pie anymore, and we'll get rid of two of these iron bars, so we'll have some space. Um, but what you need is 10 cooked trout and 10 bread for this quest, and one of our iron bars. So it makes sense to do quite early, uh, plus we'll get rid of another iron bar from our inventory. Just going to grab a Slayer task while we're here. You might as well just have one, even if you're not planning to do Slayer. See, I've just got 17 cows, so if I need some meat or some combat training, there's no reason not to go do cows now and also get a tiny bit of Slayer XP in the meantime. But yeah, Death Plateau, that's something I'd like to do quite early. Uh, so this is Druidic Ritual. Talk to these druids at the Standing Stones. Um, it does recommend 10 combat. Um, obviously, <laughs> us being 8 combat, we failed to kill the bear, but that's okay. If we check it in our quest journal, it says I need to speak to Sanfu. So yeah, what we will do, like I said, is just progress Druidic Ritual 
up to the point where they tell us we need to gather the meats and then put them in the cauldron in the dungeon. And then I'm free to just, as I'm going about doing other things, collect the meat as I find it. Sanfu? Sanfu, give me some of your serums. Uh, so we've talked to Sanfu on the way, we'll just check. Yeah, okay. So he's told us what meat and stuff we need. Hopefully we have... No, we don't have the 26 agility for this tunnel. Damn, I was hoping we would. Do I want to play pinball? I guess. Pinball minigame, I think, always gives you noted gems, which is fine. But it is free money at the end of the day. And if I turn down this random event, I'd just get nothing, so... So there's ten. So yeah, oh, we got five cut rubies, that's great. Those are probably worth quite a lot, honestly. It says high elk value, 600 each, so they might sell to a shop for like 300 apiece. Um, it is an inventory space, but at least it's weightless because it's a banknote, so... It's not going to slow us down. I uh, just detoured into this jail because there's a diary task to talk to the head security guard in here and get a security book. Um, just for the Falador Easy Diary, so. There we go, Falador task. I'm not even going to read it, mate. Not interested in account security. So we'll just go around this corner down to this peninsula down here, and we'll be at Thurgo's house. There we go, look at him, chubby lad. He's had his pie, he's happy. But like I said last time, any time we're sort of near a diary task and it's easily done, then we might as well just knock it out as we walk past, because the diaries are going to be really, really helpful for us. Each diary rewards you an equipable piece of armour or uh, jewellery or something with some perks on it, and they're infinitely reclaimable for free. So for someone like us who's going to be getting rid of our gear a couple of times and, you know, dropping invent spaces and things, having uh, equipment that we can go reclaim for free is going to be really, really helpful. Plus, obviously, you get a bunch of perks like teleports and unlock from doing the diaries, so um, it's going to be really, really good for us to do. And like I say, we'll be doing the Ardy diary today. Right, we're back to Falador. We just need to go talk to the Squire again because the Dwarf guy needs a diagram of the sword, which makes complete sense. I don't know why you'd go to him without a diagram in the first place, but I guess it just makes the quest a little bit longer, doesn't it? Uh, while we are here, though, we will hit up the general store and just flog these five rubies and see what we get for them. 400 each. So if I sell one, then the price goes down to 370. I'll just sell them all. Wow. 3k. That random event's given us more money than everything we've ever done put together. So there's a chicken here in the courtyard, which we do need for that druid quest, but um, I'll get it just when we uh, hand this quest in at the very end, because we need invent space at the minute. And like I say, there's no point carrying four pieces of meat on us at once, unless we have all four. So we've got the portrait, now we need to go all the way back down to Thurgo, and subsequently then do his little dungeon bit, and then come all the way back here. Okay, here we are back at Thurgo's. You'd think for a, a master craftsman he'd live in a better house. I mean, he's just got like a wood hut with holes in it and no door. It's like, dude, like, smith a better house. Okay, about the sword. Here's a picture. I need some blue right ore. So here I'm really hoping that we can do this segment. Um, I don't want another disappointment like with the bear. Um, the issue with this... Obviously now I swapped the robes, I'm not even wearing like a leather body piece, so... <laughs> We are really squishy at the minute with one defense and no defensive gear equipped. Uh, this guy seems like he's blocked a bit, so... Oh, we've got one on us. Okay, we're just going to YOLO it. If we can really quickly mine this, that would be ideal. Game, please. Please. Awesome. If we just hop worlds, we can grab a second one immediately. Steel pick coming through. Oh, and 19 mining, lovely. Oh, they've added a tunnel here. Where's this go? Oh, that's new. I guess if you're here to do wyverns, it saves... Not even that much time. That's weird. You still have to run round half the way. I mean, on RS3, the shortcut's in this wall here. So you come down the ladder if you want to do wyverns, and you just hop through the wall. Okay, anyway, we got our two oars. Um, one for the quest, one for the diary afterwards. We should get the sword straight away, and then we run back up to Falador and turn the quest in. And we get a stupid, honestly a stupid amount of smithing XP for this. Oh uh, right, yeah, we need smithing 13. That's fine, we'll get more than that by just talking to this guy and finishing up. Oh, it's 12,000, okay. So yeah, that puts us to 29, which is just ridiculous. We can nearly make iron plate. Which is, you know, good armor for us, because that's like the best we can wear at one defense. Uh, I'll just kill this chicken just for the meat, just for the sake of it. Just so we've got it on us. 
we might do our cow slayer task and then get the beef from doing that. And then maybe doing that task will get our combats up enough to fight the bear, I'm not really sure. What I will do though is real quick make this bar into a uh, crossbow limb for the diary and then we'll have an extra invent space. And since we preemptively brought a hammer, we can use it for this diary task, so that's really good. So we're back here at Doric's house real quick. Just use his anvil. Right, there you go. You can keep those, Doric, mate. Well, that quest actually took quite a long time, surprisingly. What I will do is tally to Lumbridge. Um, we're going to do our cow task. We'll ditch some of these tools that we can buy back at the general store. I think I'll ditch the steel pick for now. I'll just real quick check if I need it for biohazard or not. I don't think so. So we'll sell the steel picks. So we can come back to hand members and get another one if we need to. And that's a nice 200, so we'll just sell these garbage tools. Um, and then we'll turn on our best prayers, which are just these two. And then we'll attempt to kill 17 cows, if we can. It would probably have made sense to keep the tinderbox, actually. Just going to grab a tinderbox back from the general store because we're going to make a fire as we go and cook up this beef just to hopefully uh, make sure we survive the full 16 kills. And what we're going to do while we're doing this task is just gather up the cow hides because um, our crafting is abysmally low. We actually can't do anything, really. So we'll do this cow task and we'll keep all the hides. We'll run over through the gate to Alcarid, tan them into whatever the best thing is we can make. And then I guess it's probably worthless. So we'll probably drop it or sell it to the general store over there. I think in future, before I know that I'm going to kill a bunch of things, I'll probably get an actual weapon and not an axe. Okay, we've got eight strength, so we can still hit two as well on defensive. So that's good. Well, at least it lets us train something other than strength without losing half our DPS. Also, I should remember at the end of this to keep one raw beef for the quest. Just going to light a fire now, just because we are full on invent space. And then we can take this other raw beef and this cowhide, rather than leaving them to despawn. What we are going to do is we're going to juggle some cooked meat on the ground. So if we just drop two meat... Now we're, now we're Iron Man gaming. We're UIM gaming. Right, there we go. First Slayer task complete on the account. Pay the 10 GP toll. Real quick while we're here, we'll just check what we can unlock from crafting. So we start off only being able to do gloves, which is really all we'll be able to do because we're only level four. We can do wool, but as we know, that's like two XP each. It's not worth the time. We can make pots out of clay, but it's a lot of work. Glass is always good. Just requires a lot of money and quite a few invent spaces. Um, I can't believe it's 20 to cut sapphires. So that's going to be a nice goal for us. If we can get recoils and games necklaces unlocked, Obviously leather gear is kind of range equipment. We're not training range at the moment, so we won't make any uh, actual leather armor. Let's see how far we get. Wow, 14 each, that's crazy. That's like seven balls of wool. So we'll just drop two, just to pick up the leather. And while walking, we'll carry on crafting. So this is peak efficiency. Okay, that little excursion gave us two crafting levels, that's not bad. Sets us up at one below leather boots, so next time if we do this again we can probably get to leather boots. Um, I'm going to check out the shops here, see what's available, because as far as I remember there is a scimitar shop. I want to see what skimmies they do in fact have. They do have steel, which we can use. Sadly they don't have black or white. That'll be the best possible weapon before level 20 attack, which is quite far away. So I will buy one, we'll make the executive decision. It'll take one extra space, but I feel like having an actual real weapon should really help us. Okay, so what we're gonna do is come back to our trusty friend, the canoe station, grab a canoe back up to the Varrock area. Uh, we are only 20 XP off steel, so if I kill one or two things on defensive real quick while we're here, we'll row up to Varrock. Awesome. Oh, it's a shield. I mean, I wasn't going to use a shield, but it's certainly better than the book. And since we got it for free, you know, I'll happily drop it after killing this bear. Uh, we'll just check out the armor shop while we're here, um, because there is a steel plate armor shop in town. Uh, if we can buy a full set of steel and it's not going to absolutely break the bank, then I think we'll just grab some steel armor and, and attempt the bear now with steel armor and a steel skin. I feel like it's probably worth just having armor. But yeah, let's see how much it's going to cost us. 
2,000 for steel, that's crazy. That's so expensive. What about iron? 560. Oh, I really didn't expect it to be 2k for a steel plate. Okay, I mean, obviously what we could actually do, what I didn't even consider because I'm stupid, is just buy some runes. Just kill the bear with magic, right? We can technically do water strike, but I feel like we could just air strike the bear. I'd much rather lose money buying runes than lose money temporarily buying steel armor. So for 760, we'll buy 100 casts. Let's talk to Zaf, see how much his staff of water is. 1500, no way, buddy. Uh, so how much are these? Four each, so let's buy 20. And if we can't kill the bear in 20 casts, then we'll just swap back to airstrike. I can't believe I didn't even consider the fact that you could not melee something. <laughs> and with all this faffing about, our home teleport's only three minutes off. I'm sort of filling up on T's because even though we're safe spotting this bear, in theory we're going to go do biohazard straight away afterwards and that has melee combat in it. So we will have just some food. What we're going to do here while this bear's in a good spot is just hit him with our skim. Then he'll follow us. Then we walk between the trees where he's too fat to walk through. And then we'll just cast on him repeatedly. There we go, nearly killed him with our 10 casts. Um, just needed one more wind strike to take him out. We'll just bury the bones uh, and grab the meat. Look at that efficiency. We're six seconds off our teleport being available. Uh, we'll go back to whichever crazy menu they've put the teleports under. Berthop Games Room, telly. Back in Berthop, uh, what we will do again We'll grab another beginner slayer task as we run past, just because there's really no reason to not have a slayer task. As with before, if we're passing by the monster that we we're assigned to kill, we can just decide to detour and kill them. 44 spiders is a lot, uh, so we'll just keep that in mind. Uh, it should stay up here on the top of our screen reminding us that's our task. And then this one is just a logout timer plugin from the plugin hub. Um, basically if you don't interact with the game, don't move your mouse, it starts ticking down to show you, you know the five minute timer to being logged out. So we'll just run down here. We're not fighting blue dragons today. Yeah, these suits of armor should come to life, um, I think. And you just spam click the door, and then the door shuts. So none of the people can get you. We use our meats on this weird cauldron. There are actually some spiders in this room, level one. Sadly, the respawn's really slow, so we're not gonna do that now. Uh, we have made a small dent, but like I say, We'll just find a better spot for spiders later down the line and do 41 in one go. We give him his weird, disgusting blue meat. And then that's pretty much it. We'll just run back up to the stone circle, turn this in. It's nice to do this quest now and have it unlocked for any future lamps. This guy just tells us how to make a potion, which is whatever. And then we get herb law and three herb law, which is fantastic. But for now, we'll just run down to the Rivington area and take the boat. Uh, what I'm thinking, actually, I may go grab the Boots of Lightness before we start this quest. Uh, because if there is a lot of walking, then having that negative uh, weight from the boots should help our run energy recharge a little bit. I'm hoping it makes a noticeable difference. So there's the prayer points, and here's the candle. It's always here, anyone can pick this up. So if you do need a light source, especially if you have the Ardy Cloak 1 already that teleports you right here to this monastery, you can just grab one from here, it's really useful. We'll just grab a knife and we'll just grab a tinder box as well, just in case there's some kind of mechanic that blows our candle out when we enter this dungeon. So we're here just at the top of Ardy. Uh, we're just gonna head north, a little bit east, just below the Ranging Guild. It's the Temple of Ikov, which is a quest, um, but we're not gonna do the quest right now. We're just gonna go inside, grab the boots and come straight back out, come back down here, start by a hazard quest. It should give us Pretty much everything we need to do the Ardy Easy Diary. That's really the reward we're here for. Oh, we have some spiders here as well we could kill for our Slayer task. Slash the web. Grab ourselves a pair of Boots of Lightness. Uh, we'll just equip them straight away. Drop our leather boots. And that's put our total weight from 20 down to 15. Which is pretty nice. So we'll start Biohazard. Because we kind of prepared, we kept the gas mask from last time, and we already picked up the pre-scan when we were over in Varrock, and it's only available over there in that clothes shop as far as I'm aware. 
There's only a few easy things left to get the RD Easy Diary. We need to enter the combat camp that you unlock for doing biohazard quests, so we'll do this first. Plus when we're there I think we can claim 300 attack XP as like a quest reward, so that'll be really helpful for us. And then we need to go out on the fishing trawler, uh, get these swords identified and finally get those out of our inventory. We need to visit Yanil and go check out the shops there as a task. And then I think finally we need to visit the Essence Mine um, from the crazy wizard just up here in town. So once we've done all those things then, uh, we'll get our RD Cape 1, which is really, really good. Fly, my pretties. Fly! Cool. Now we talk to this agent and we're going to Mission Impossible our way over this wall. Oh, we've got a system update in half an hour. Interesting. Uh, that might be the new smithing update. I guess that'll be ticking down. You'll see just how long it takes me to walk about and do quests like this. Just because of how slow it is to travel. I know last time I said I'd get some agility done, but we are still on the 12 that we left off at. Uh, we do have the Draenor course, which is really helpful. So maybe after we get this easy diary, I'll scoot to Draenor and get to maybe 20 agility. Also, I love this. This guy didn't let me in, so I changed to the doctor's gown right in front of him, and he's like, oh, you're a doctor, come through. I believe this is the part where we fight the guy. We don't know that we have to talk to him, I think we just kill him. But now we have a steel skim and a shield, so I'm just really hoping we hit. We've drank our attack potion, <laughs> our budget T attack potion. Just need to see a couple of twos, you know? Or can we safe spot him, is that possible? Because we do have our mage runes. So I mean if he wants to just stand there and get slapped. Oh I'm so glad I brought too many for the bear. Oh, we're on negative six mage because of the shield, my bad. I was wondering why I was repeatedly splashing. I thought, is this guy crazy tanky or what? Let's see if we can kill him in the 26 minutes we have. <laughs> I think we should, but it's not looking promising at the moment. There we go, that's awesome. Automatically get his key. Search is great. Go back to Elena. Back to our best friend. One of the few truly good characters in this game. We need to take these plague samples and smuggle them into Varrock. Uh, we're just going to head over with Captain Barnaby, our best friend. Uh, take the boat to Rivington that we've done a thousand times so far. Uh, and then there's some NPCs on the dock and they'll smuggle them into Varrock for us. And then we just need to make our own way into Varrock, but I guess that's alright. Uh, so yeah, we'll just give these guys the, uh, the goods, like we said. I'm just thinking, is there a fishing trawler teleport? Oh wow, there is. Wait, was that about to let me minigame telly while my home telly's on cooldown? Am I just really stupid in their two different cooldowns? I swear they used to be the same. Like if you'd home telly to Lumbridge, you couldn't telly to like, Burthorpe Games Room without waiting or whatever. As soon as I've turned this in, I'll try um, fishing trawler tally to get back over to the Ardy area. This changes everything! <laughs> but no, that is huge if that works. Um, so we'll try that in a minute. So we'll let this guy search us. Uh, this stupid mugger interrupts the conversation. We then lose to him in a fight. Let's see if this guy will help us. Help, I'm being assaulted. Seems like a nice guy, see? He's got himself a uh, nice RD Cape 1. Thank you, George. If you ever watch this, hi, thanks for being nice. <laughs> so we grab all our little uh, vials of garbage back from these guys. They've managed to smuggle them into town. We just take him to this doctor who's strangely right next to the pub. Yeah, okay. So we'll try that thing. Um, wow. Guess I'm really dumb. <laughs> I don't know why I thought they shared a cooldown. Maybe you guys know? Did it used to share a cooldown? I mean, there's two separate icons on Runelight, so that's wild. Uh, anyway, um, we've teleported specifically to Port Cazard. It's a little bit south of Ardy, just near the monastery. Um, just because while we're here, we can take these stupid rusty swords out of our inventory. So we'll pay this dude. Lost a bit of money there, but we did do the diary task. Uh, also, while we're here, we want to go out on the fishing trawler, right? We'll just go out on the fishing trawler on our own and immediately quit the game because it's a diary task just to go out on the fishing trawler. So we'll do this one. So we get put in this like weird ruined version of the ship where you just hop on a barrel, head back to shore, 
That puts us closer to Ardy. I think I'll sort my inventory as soon as we turn Biohazard in. Uh, so we'll just talk to Wizard Property, right click teleport, you've completed an easy task. Uh, and then we'll scoot out and go turn the quest in. And um, we've got just over 11 minutes till the servers go down. <laughs> Final step of Biohazard now, we just need to head to the castle, tell the king that we found out that the plague is in fact not real, and then he'll tell us, well obviously don't be stupid. So quest wise this will put us in line to do underground pass next on this quest line, um, but we'll just close the quest helper for that because we're not going to do underground pass for some time. Right that's Biohazard, out the way. Um, just real quick we're going to use the RD uh, wilderness lever, just because it's right behind the castle. So what we will do just before the system update, like I say, just do this wildy step. Hopefully this puts us back to Ardy. I think it does. Yep, awesome. Uh, we'll just run to this combat training camp. It's immediately north of town. You see we're here. Combat training camp's right here. This place. So we can hit these dummies, supposedly, a number of times. These are awarding 50. It's much more than the 5 we got back in Varrock. I guess we just do it, yeah, there we go. We do it until it just says we can't anymore. That's awesome. So we shot from eight attack all the way to 10. That lets us use black and white weapons. Um, and let's just see what's in this shop. Bronze arrow tips for one. If we buy 50, are they still one? No, they're two. Okay, this is quite a pricey shop, but it is good to know that we can get an ax here if we need to drop ours for any reason. What I may do, since we have a few hundred feathers, is just hop worlds by 50 arrow tips per world. Um, just until we have, say, 200. Yep, awesome. Okay, we'll just do 200 because it is costing us money and we do want to keep some of these feathers for fishing. Um, so we'll just run outside real quick, grab some logs, run down to the general store, grab a knife, fletch these into arrow shafts, pop feathers on them, then pop arrow tips on those. And since they're bronze arrows and we already have some of those equipped, uh, we can just immediately equip them once they're made so it won't use an invent space. Uh, and then we'll have a nice little stash of arrows for when we do want to start training range. Just checking in on the diary one more time, all we have to do is go to Yanil and visit the hunter shop. Just grab a knife here while we're passing this shop. So just as planned, we got six fletching from doing all that, about six and a half. Uh, we got 200 bronze arrows which we can equip. So now we have 225. Uh, and now we've arrived in Yanil, we just need to go into this hunter store here. Yeah, so there we go. Easy task. You've done the easy diary, well done. Um, but yeah, okay, so system updates. I'll be back in a few real-time hours. Um, we'll go claim our diary stuff, uh, and then we'll crack on to other big goals for the account. One hour later. Now we've finished all the easy achievements. Get ourselves a fantastic cape, which, as I'm sure everyone knows, provides unlimited teleports to the monastery just here. So if we ever need to get to this side of the map. So we'll just talk to two pints. There's the cape. Uh, we'll grab it. Obviously another option would be not to turn in the diary at all until we have a skill that we want to use the lamp on, but I really want the cape um, now because it's so so good. Uh, we'll just start sheep herder while we're here, we'll get ourselves a cheeky 3k coins. Um, it isn't actually a short quest, it's quite long, especially with low agility, but it should only take a couple of minutes. So we'll put this plague gear on, looking sharp. Right, so we grab a cattle prod. Uh, but yeah, what we have to do is prod one of each coloured sheep into this uh, enclosure by walking behind them and shepherding them. It's not fun. Everyone's done this quest, everyone knows it sucks. If we can push him from here, maybe? Nope, didn't work. So they can just, you know, wander off. This one's heading all the way back. I don't have the run to catch up with him, so that's really good fun. Yep, it's really going all the way back. It's really going all the way back. 3,100 coins, obviously you have to give him 100 coins at the start of the quest, so we've made 3k profit, that's fantastic. There's no XP though, sadly. I think, since we're kind of in the region, is do fishing contest. We'll get another little boost to our fishing level. I know you need a garlic, and I remember seeing one in here earlier, because we encounter a stinky vampire during this quest. So yeah, it's another one of those nice, early, easy quests. It doesn't really require any items or account progress, but um, gives you a nice XP reward and also unlocks a shortcut for us in future, so it's gonna be really good to get this out of the way now. He does have a spade, awesome. Okay, we'll grab that. See you, Richard. Still trying to decide just what order we're doing everything in. I've got a vague idea of some quests that I do want to do. Definitely want to do Death Plateau, 
Unlocking this uh, shortcut through to Berthorp will help uh, in doing Death Plateau though. So we'll do this first, then we'll probably buy a fly fishing rod or something. Just chill in Catherby for a little while, catch something like sardines, and just cook enough of those to get us to 15. Um, and then we'll get 10 bread, 10 cooked trout, and we'll go do Death Plateau, which will also let us get rid of this iron bar from our inventory as well. So we'll just grab some red vine worms here. You only need one for this quest, but I'll grab two or three just to make sure. So that's our garlic, our worms, and our fishing pass. Okay, just on the way to the fishing contest here, I will stop at this guy's house and um, talk to this guy twice. And then we get a cup of tea and we do an easy task. Just buy ourselves a fishing rod, then we'll go through the gate, do the contest. We just pop our garlic in this vent, which causes the vampire guy to not want to fish here. Okay, so we caught three fish. We won the trophy. A really, really, really easy quest. So we get back to Vestry, our little dwarf friend. Give him his trophy, we get our reward. Nice access to this tunnel next to him. Plus 26 fishing, I think we were just 24 before, so that's nice. Very nearly 27, so we'll definitely get that while messing about here. So what we need to do now is clear up some invent space. Uh, I'll definitely get rid of these bones, I'll get rid of this candle, the knife. What I'll do is I'll use my 38 casts of airstrike. So we'll just get the XP, and that'll give us two invent spaces. There's 10 mage, awesome. Uh, we've not really unlocked anything of value. I guess we can do Earth Strike now, but we probably won't use that. So we'll sell all our cakes because we no longer need those. We'll sell the spade. We'll drop the fishing pass. We are going to be a few invent spaces short. I guess when we get to Lombridge, we can juggle some fish. Uh, so what we will do is we'll buy... Oh, he doesn't have a fly fishing rod. That's really weird. How much is a bait? Okay, we'll buy one pack of bait. That's 300 of our hard-earned coins. Uh, we'll just buy a small and a big net because they're really cheap. So if we do this big net spot, hopefully we'll grab some mackerels. There we go, we caught one straight away and it's given us a diary task, so that's awesome. And a casket, it's always nice to find those. Alright, there's a full inventory. As you can probably see, uh, I stopped doing mackerel um, pretty quickly. They were taking so long to catch a one. I swapped over to the bait spots. Uh, obviously herring and sardines are much lower level than mackerel, but I'm hoping just because of the speed of actually catching them and getting a full inventory that it turns out to be faster cooking XP. Wow, we got 14, so more than a full level off the first inventory, that's really good. So we'll just head back, oh, let's just open the casket real quick. I uh, got some coins, I didn't check what we had before, but I think it was quite a lot. Awesome, there's 15, with two fish left. Uh, that was relatively quick, I thought that would take a lot longer. We need to get rid of three things, right? So I guess we'll get rid of all our fishing stuff. So now we actually have one extra space. So we'll run down to the bread stall in Ardy. My only issue at the moment is not actually having a fly fishing rod, which probably actually means it's quicker taking the boat from here with Captain Barnaby to Rimington and walking to Port's Rim that way, and just not bothering to home teleport. Cool, there's 10 bread. Hopefully we don't accidentally click on one and eat it on the way there, but I'll be careful. Okay, here we are, Geraint's fishing shop. Like we say, we'll just uh, grab one fly fishing rod. Easily got enough feathers. Seems really wrong to use home telly, but we'll just home telly because it'll save us probably two or three minutes of walking. And Plus now we know that we can minigame telly separately to home telly, then I'm a little bit happier to use it. Really good fishing method, fly fishing. Very easy, it's very cheap to get feathers, even on an Iron Man. But let's just pray for the power of the Lumbridge kitchen stove. Okay, so we burnt two. I think what I will do real quick just temporarily drop my air talisman and my law runes. Um, we'll just get two more fish in the inventory. We should be able to run across, cook these, and get back before they disappear. So we're just giving ourselves a buffer, because we need two more cooked fish, so if we take four with us, chances are we'll get at least two out of those four. <laughs> Typical. So we burnt three out of the four, so we need to go back again and get one more. Cool, just redrop those. There we go, out of those three, only one cooked successfully. Uh, but at least now we have everything we need, so we'll just run back. Okay. That's our goodies, let's find the telly button again, berth up games room, teleport. Hopefully this quest doesn't require any more invent spaces. If it does, then I'll probably have to drop my runes and my talisman again. 
I'm a little bit worried about talking to this guy in here, just because I feel like this room might become inaccessible in a bit. So now we need to take an Asgarnian Ale from the bar, which is another inventory space. And we'll just drop our axe inside. It's not a huge deal if we lose this axe, because, you know, might as well. Let's gamble 500. I think it's pure chance. Oh, wow. That was so unlikely. We can read it. Um, cool. Okay, that turns into the combination. That's awesome. Oh, this puzzle needs a couple of invent spaces. I think you can probably do it with one. So we'll just drop our talisman in here and do the stove balls. It's a very strange security system <laughs> to put coloured balls on a thing. But apparently that's what the soldiers of Berthorpe think is best, so... I won't juggle the axe, I'm not going to go back for it. Like I say, it's so easy to reclaim. Another Iron Man here doing the same quest, good luck to you. Much higher level than I am. Maybe I'm a fool for doing it this early, but like I say, with this many items you have to carry at once. And you need more space to actually do the quest. It's a really good idea to get this out of the way quite quickly. It might actually be worth selling these lore runes. Because we're certainly not going to have a teleport for a little while. Oh, he dropped the climbing boots on the floor, okay. Oh, get a load of this guy. <laughs> he's just overtaken me because he's got a games necklace to get back here quicker. Very smart. I'm glad that we're getting the, um, the quest items just dropped on the floor for us. Because I never have any space to collect them. So we'll go back. This should turn three items into one, which is good. We'll get two invent spaces back. So now's the part in the quest where we actually finally get rid of this 20 food that we're lugging around with us. We just need to take these back to the Sherpa, and then he'll teach us the secret way up to Death Plateau. Okay, we've given this guy all his supplies, now we can go check out the trolls through this secret passage from his back garden. Maybe we'll go back to Alcarid and grab that myth skim from before. I don't remember how much it costs, but if we are going to train our melee then it makes perfect sense to make sure we have the best weapon possible. This guy gets it. There we go, bring the map back to the dude. And that's that. Another quest down. 19 attack, just like we thought. Congratulations! Oh, thanks, dude. Um, I don't think there's anything else we need to do up here in the Berthop area at the minute. Um, we are very close to 20 attack, like we thought. It does look like that quest has pushed us up all the way to 14 combat, which is real nice. I think what I might actually do, guys, I'll head to Draenor Village, do a couple of laps on the rooftop, I think we said it was 24 or something, um, to get our agility from 12 to 20. If I can kill a couple of things along the way, I'll get 20 attack. Should only be a couple of monsters, honestly. I'll head over to Alcarid, we'll look at the scimitar shop. I think there was a myth sim available. So with that 20 attack, we'll upgrade from this steel to a myth sim, and then we'll have a real weapon. And then while we're there, I might take a look at how long it's going to take to do the Alcarid agility course. That's kind of uh, looking like a plan. So yeah, for now, we'll just head straight to Draenor. 20 agility, 20 attack. Oh look, it's our friend again. <laughs> Wonder what he's off to do next. Keep seeing him everywhere. Say no to strangers. Anyway, here we are. It should be about 24 laps to hit our target, I think. Yeah, 24 shouldn't take too long, so I think it's like a minute a lap or something, maybe a bit less. So I'll see you guys maybe in like 20 minutes. Oh, we got an easy task for that, awesome. Fantastic, there's our 20 agility that we came here for. We can now use the Alcarid course, lovely. That's done. What I am really quickly going to do, I was just thinking about this while doing agility. Uh, we're going to go grab some mage stuff, just because we're quite close to this magic shop in Portsarum. So we're going to ditch our gas mask because we've done Biohazard and Plague City now. Um, so we're just going to grab some runes and a wizard hat. We're going to hopefully train our mage up a little. We will get the black one. They have the same stats, but with our priest garb, it's actually going to look pretty good. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll get two airs, one mind, an earth. I'll just give us some runes to start with. Just a few casts of earth strike. We are already 10. We want to get to 13. Uh, we'll unlock Fire Strike and we'll buy a Fire Staff so we can cast it without Fire Runes. Um, so we'll cast it relatively cheap. It does decent damage for this point in the game. And then we'll use that to safe spot a bunch of quest bosses and get a ton of XP bonuses. Just killing some seagulls here at the minute. I just, like I said before, want to get this 20 uh, attack sorted. 
Seagulls have some of the lowest defense in the game. There we go. There's the big 20, so we'll go back on Slash now. Okay, next stop for us, obviously, Alcarid. And we've got 3k on us at the minute. Uh, 1.5k will save for a Fire Staff next time we're in Varrock for the aforementioned Mage training. And we really don't have anything else to spend money on right now. The reason we can afford all this is because we did that sheep quest earlier that sucked. So yeah, we do get an accuracy bonus and 6 strength bonus. Plus it actually weighs a little bit less than the steel one. So we'll sell that back and get about 200, so that's really, really cool. Right, um, now that we're in Alcarid, I'm going to get 5 more agility levels. If I just get to 25, that will give us the requirements for the Grand Tree quest, uh, which along with our magic training that's coming up, we're going to be able to safe spot that boss and get a, a really big chunk of uh, agility XP from doing that quest, which should, if we get to 25 here, skip us to like 30 probably. So we only need to do around 19 laps of this course now. So I'll just really quickly get 25. So guys, 25 agility. Up next we're going to do some mage training. We'll be doing waterfall, we'll be doing tree gnome, the grand tree, fight arena. Uh, don't know if you can mage vampire slayer, but we do have 20 attacks, so we can probably do that legit. We're gonna have to get an axe. <laughs> I'll just buy an iron axe and we'll just drop it as soon as we're done. Now luckily we've already got our Ardy Cloak 1, so we can teleport over to Ardy whenever we want. Right, we're here at Zaf Staff, just gonna grab the Fire Staff. Just been looking at some uh, enemies we could potentially kill. I think we'll kill Varrock Guards. Right, we'll just drop 1500 on that, fantastic. Now we'll be able to auto-cast. Uh, we could do defensively, but to get more magic XP out of the runes we're spending, we'll just do normal casting. Um, so yeah, uh, Varrock Guards have one magic level, and they actually have negative nine mage defense, and only 14 normal defense. So they've got really low resistance to magic, and there's this kind of fence here. So if we attack him from here, he should just come walk up to the fence. So we'll be using Earth Strike. So in three levels we'll be able to use Fire Strike, utilizing the free fire runes from this staff. We're already hitting sixes with this spell. Uh, we're only hitting two or threes with melee, so... So, uh... Wow, our bestie's back! <laughs> this is definitely not scripted, I promise. This dude's the best. I'm sure he doesn't mind me <laughs> um, recording this. But yeah, that's the same guy that was doing uh, Death Plateau at the same time as me. And then I also ran into him at the cow farm near Port Surium. Randomly. I run into him again in Varrock. <laughs> Super weird. So we've got enough runes for three more casts, let's hope we can actually hit, because if we just splash then... Oh, there's one. Fantastic. Could not have calculated it better. You can now cast Fire Strike, we can already do it because we have the Fire Staff on. We do need some more Mind Runes, obviously. We've gone from hitting twos earlier in this same video to hitting sevens now. Uh, a couple of Onion Seeds. Yeah, level five. All right, I'll ditch them then. Uh, now we have a bone on us, we can give it to this dog. So that task's out of the way, awesome. Uh, right, we'll go stock up on runes. Um, and I think, probably Tree Gnome Village, I think. Um, just because unlocking the spirit trees, probably best to do first, just before we do any other quests. I mean, we could just as easily do Fight Arena. I think you might need Tree Gnome first for Grand Tree. Waterfall quest, I don't really remember what you need. I think you need a few runes for that actually. So while we're at the rune shop, let me check what we need for waterfall quest. I know you need to like drop all your items on the floor. We'll just grab some tea, just for walking around food. We'll grab some proper cakes when we're about to take on the quest. But we'll go to Aubrey, we'll buy a mind rune pack, because we're definitely going to need mines. Buy 50 more airs, because we'll need a couple for the quest. We'll buy 6 earths for waterfall quest. We'll buy 6 waters. And then we just need food, really. The issue is with this quest, we will need to drop all our runes on the floor. Um, outside the waterfall dungeon. I think you can relatively quickly get in and out of the dungeon, so it shouldn't be too hard. Uh, came to this general store looking for a rope. There isn't one, so... Ardy general store. So here's the plan. Kandarin monastery teleport, first time using that. Really, really good teleport. We will do tree gnome first, because the most important thing is getting those spirit trees online. Especially since now we can teleport to this monastery, because when we need to go somewhere that's near a spirit tree, we can teleport here, run around the back of the clock tower, and there's a spirit tree right there. Hopefully we've got enough casts to kill the guy. Uh, we should do. Seems like we've got about 97 casts on us. Hopefully we don't use them all, because we do need a couple of runes for waterfall quest. We need to use some of these airs. What you need to do is manually go through this maze once. 
And then once we've done this, we can use the Hermie Elkoi to teleport through the maze, so we never have to do it again. Um, you do need six logs, which we didn't bring with us, and we just dropped our axe, which was kind of dumb. Uh, but what we will do is find somewhere with an axe or with a log spawn, just go grab them, and then we can just monastery teleport back. So it's no biggie. Or should I say gnome biggie? Boo, get off the stage! Please hurry, we need our defensive orb back. Totally fine, I'm on it. Well home telly, like we said. Here we are, four logs, hop worlds, pick a random world. Grab a few more. There's all six. Monastery telly. So we've got his logs, I think they're for fixing the catapult if I remember right. Um, the issue with this quest is you can't actually safe spot the boss. Um, you need to just keep running away out of his aggro range while maging him down. And there's also aggressive wolves and other soldiers near him, so we're really pushing the lowest level that we can do this quest. Uh, just because it does give you such a big boost in combat stats if you can be at this stage in the game. It'll certainly get us a couple of levels, even though we're already 20. Plus, the main thing, we'll get the spirit trees unlocked. And I have been wanting to go up to the Grand Tree place um, a couple of times. And it's such a long walk, but with the spirit tree straight there, that would be really helpful. So if we do this quest and then the Grand Tree quest, we'll have spirit trees and gnome gliders. We should be able to get around the game a little bit more efficiently. It shouldn't be too much of a slog to get places. Because right now, we're kind of just walking everywhere on consistently empty run energy. <laughs> But surely, in 90 casts of Fire Strike, we can kill the guy. Uh, but at least we do have sort of a panic telly in the uh, RD cloak. So we can telly out if we go really low. Wow, almost died. Completely forgot about that guy. I think someone spawns here when you open this. Yeah, he attacks you as well. Let's telly out. <laughs> We got the orb, so that's great. We'll just head up to the Ardy Cake stall, grab a bit of food for this quest, and then we'll just cloak Telly back here, and we should be able to fast travel through the maze at this point in the quest. Uh, what's this? Evil Bob Random. I'm not sure if it's the fishing one or the other one. Oh, it's the other one. Two Ugthanky Kebabs. I mean, actually, they are incredibly good food. I might unnote them here on the way back and bring them along with the cakes we're about to get. Good old trusty cake stall. <laughs> I swear, if you know the game Iron Man, you're here all the time. I think this is our first time on noting something as a UIM. Obviously you can't use your bank, but you can use banknotes on a banker uh, to receive the item. And Cape Telly, turn the run off, we need to save it. Back to the king. So from now on we can just talk to Elkoy to go either way through the maze. So that's another little quick travel we have unlocked on the account. We even get a nice escort straight from the king outside the town. So now we need to walk behind West Ardy all the way up here in this strange corner. We do have a lot of food so I'm not super worried. I mean what you can do, which is kind of cheating, but I mean it's part of the game you're allowed to, um, you can bring an ult and just block the NPC behind your ult and then just mage him and he can't get to you, you can use your ult as like a fence. Obviously we're not going to be doing that, it's just lame isn't it? Also for whatever reason this guy gives reduced uh, magic and combat XP. As you can see if I hit him I get 11 or 12. Okay so he does have the capacity to two hit us because he, he can hit sevens. Uh, we seem to be doing okay, we're not going too quickly through our stash of runes. Um, it's just this guy has 170 health and it seems like we can hit at most a seven. There we go, grab his orbs, and uh, then go back to King Balran. Um, is it closer to the monastery? It's probably about the same, but the monastery is definitely safer, because there's no wolves on the way. Uh, so that was that. Barely even used our Myth Skimitar, and we're probably going to end up at Adamant, or maybe at least around that tier, just from doing this quest. But there's more XP to come. There's more XP to come, just you wait. There we go, they sing the happy gnome song for us. We revive the tree. And the teleport network's back online. There we go, huge attack XP drop. 31 attack, absolutely disgusting. <laughs> and quite close to 32, so we've gone all the way up to the Addy level. Um, really, really useful. 
Okay, and with that quest handed in, I think we'll call this episode here, guys. Quite a lot of progress in this one. Of course, we trained our cooking up, we did Cook's Assistant at the very start, we uh, did our Redberry Pies in Varrock, uh, we did Romeo and Juliet on the way, uh, we got all the meats for Druidic Ritual, took us a little bit of time, but we made it in the end. Uh, of course, we went to Falador, we did the Knight Sword, we got our smithing up from 1 to 29, so that was really, really good. Uh, did our first Slayer task on cows. Um, obviously, we grabbed our Steel Scimitar from Al Karid. Uh, we got our Boots of Lightness, which are going to help us run around in future, so that's really, really helpful. We got ourselves the Biohazard quest complete, um, so that gave us a little bit of XP, I think, in Thieving, and some attack XP at the end. And after Biohazard, we did a few miscellaneous objectives to complete the RD Diary 1, obviously giving us our excellent cape here, which, as you guys have already seen, is really, really useful for teleporting. After that, we knocked out the Sheep Herder quest, if you remember, got us some money, which is really helpful. Uh, we did the fishing contest quest. It gave us a little bit of fishing XP and it's unlocked as a nice shortcut to get from Catherby to Tavoli in future. So that would be really, really helpful for getting our account around. Of course, we trained our cooking up even more. We had to get to at least 15 for the death plateau quest for those fish. So we did end the episode on 17 cooking, which is really, really helpful as well. Bit of crafting from doing that leather. A little bit of fletching from those bronze arrows at the end. Got ourselves five miscellaneous thieving levels in between. And obviously from four mage all the way to 14 mage, so now we can use this fire spell. Uh, another big one, we trained our agility up from 12 all the way to 25, so more than double. Hopefully that'll have a noticeable effect on running around the game. And of course, finally, we completed Tree Gnome Village, uh, a quest that got us a whole ton of attack XP. So now we're at 31, we can use adamant weapons in the upcoming episodes, and we've unlocked access to the Spirit Tree teleportation system. So we can use our RD cape, teleport to the monastery, click on the Spirit Tree, and get to a number of places around the map a lot quicker than before. Uh, also, I don't know if it counts, but we found out that you can actually use the minigame telly uh, independently of the home telly. So in upcoming episodes there should be less walking for me to edit out um, and a little faster progress in travelling around so that's really really fantastic. As usual really appreciate you guys checking out this episode. I'd really be interested in feedback as to whether or not to add music in future. So far I've decided not to put music in these videos just because it gives people a chance to listen to the music that they want to at the same time. So I really don't know. I really would like to know what you guys think so let me know in the comments below if you have an opinion on that. Also I am aware the uh, video footage is not that good quality right now it's kind of passable potentially not next episode maybe the episode after that uh, i have started recording in about three times the bit rate so hopefully it'll look a lot better um i just didn't consider the fact that i could actually do that and uh, and manage it with the uploads so as usual guys um any feedback on the series or any ideas for what to do upcoming uh, any strategies for any roadblocks we might hit in future or if you have any tips on the order to take on things in future then please let me know in the comments below i will read them all and get back to you um and i really appreciate your support so i will see you in the next one we've got more quests coming up more big combat games coming up uh, so i'll see you there take care guys